Hello there, and welcome to the Nutrition Diva podcast, a show where we take a closer look at nutrition news and research and trends so that you can make more informed choices about what you eat. I'm your host, Monica Reinagel. It is New Year's resolution season, and one of the most popular resolutions, always, is to cut down on sugar. So I thought this might be a good time to revisit the science on Gymnema Sylvester. This is an herbal supplement that claims to reduce sugar cravings. So could this be a useful tool in your efforts to cut back on sugar? There are definitely some compelling reasons to moderate our consumption of added sugars. And there is also some promising research on Gymnema as a useful tool in this regard. But before we dig into all of that, let me take this opportunity to clear up a couple of common myths about sugar. Some people believe, for example, that eating sugar fuels cancer growth or weakens the immune system. Now, while it is true that cancer cells use glucose to fuel their growth, so do all the cells in your body. And there is no credible evidence that eating sugar directly speeds up cancer progression or for that matter, that adopting a sugar-free diet will slow cancer growth. And similarly, there's no strong evidence that sugar impairs your immune response to infections like colds or the flu. Another myth is that diets high in sugar increase your risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Now, while that disease is characterized by an impaired ability to properly metabolize dietary sugars— A diet high in sugar does not necessarily lead to type 2 diabetes. Factors such as excess body weight, sedentary lifestyles, and genetics actually play a much more significant role. So for me, the primary reason to limit added sugar is simply that foods that are high in sugar are often sources of excess and empty calories, and these can crowd out more nutritious options and contribute to overweight. Now, often when people decide that they want to cut down on sugar, they're often drawn to very drastic interventions, such as doing a zero sugar challenge. Maybe you're in the middle of one of those right now. But completely eliminating sugar from your diet is actually pretty difficult, and it's not really necessary. Getting your added sugar consumption down to the recommended limits, and generally that's between 6 and 10 teaspoons a day, or 25 to 40 grams, that is probably a much more sustainable goal. That said, depending on your previous habits, even that might be pretty challenging at first. But what if sweets didn't taste sweet to you? Would they lose their appeal? Well, this is the idea behind mints and sprays containing the herb Gymnema sylvester. It's native to India, where it has been used for a century in Ayurvedic medicine for managing diabetes, among other things. And in fact, the Hindi name for this herb is Gurmar, and that translates to destroyer of sugar. And indeed, it does have a very strange and unique property. When you eat this herb, Compounds called gymnemic acids bind to the sweet taste receptors on your tongue, and it makes sweet foods taste less sweet or even tasteless. Now, this effect is temporary. It lasts around 30 to 60 minutes, but it can have a pretty profound impact on how you experience sugary foods during that time. When I first covered this topic way back in 2018, I mentioned a small placebo-controlled trial in which subjects were allowed to eat a piece of their favorite candy. And then after they enjoyed their treat, some of those subjects were given a lozenge containing gymnemic acid and others were given a placebo. And then they were all offered more of their favorite candy. And those who had gotten the active lozenge consumed 44% less candy than those who got the placebo, so they only ate about half as much. So I tried this myself with a product called Sweet Defeat. It's a hard candy, and it was slightly sweet and pleasantly minty, but as it dissolved on my tongue, the strangest thing happened. 
So as the gymnemic acid started to interact with the taste receptors on the surface of my tongue, the taste of the lozenge itself changed. It was kind of like watching a color photograph fade to black and white. The sweetness diminished until finally the lozenge had no flavor whatsoever. So to test the effect, I then tried eating a few raisins, and it was so weird. They were just completely tasteless. It's so strange to experience the texture of a food like raisins without the sweetness. And you know, I've always kind of thought that the chewiness of raisins was one of the things that I liked about them. But without the reward of the sweet taste, raisins have very little appeal. It's kind of like chewing on rubber bands. I had no desire to continue eating them. Now, interestingly, the lozenge did not affect my ability to taste other flavors, so I could still taste and enjoy that pleasant combination of bitterness and creaminess of my unsweetened iced coffee with milk, for example, but soda, or diet soda for that matter, it tasted like slightly sour club soda. So in the interests of science, I tried another raisin every 15 minutes or so just to see how long it would be before they started tasting like raisins again. And in my case, the effect of one lozenge lasted about 60 minutes. So if a treat doesn't taste particularly good, you're less likely to continue eating it. And that effect was confirmed by that early study that I described to you. So compared with the placebo group, those who used the active lozenges subsequently ate quite a bit less candy. But there was another intriguing finding. Those who had the gymnema lozenges were also more likely to decide that they didn't even want another piece of candy, even before they had experienced the disappointingly altered taste. It seems like the inability to perceive sweetness doesn't just make it harder to enjoy a treat. It makes you less interested in having it. It's almost as if the part of your brain that wants something sweet can already tell that this sensation is not available. It's intriguing, right? Now, to be clear, I wouldn't use something like this as my one and only strategy for reducing sugar intake. I still strongly recommend limiting the amount of sweet foods and beverages that you keep in your home, in your car, or to the extent that you can control it, in your workplace. Because out of sight, out of mind. And I also don't think that a product like this replaces the benefits and the rewards of learning how to eat more mindfully. And I certainly wouldn't recommend a tool like this as a way to cope with binge eating. For help with binge eating and related eating disorders, I highly recommend checking out the resources at the National Eating Disorders Association, and you'll find them at nationaleatingdisorders.org. Since 2018, more research has been conducted on Gymnema Sylvester, and I want to bring you up to date on that today. So a longer 2022 study explored the effects of a 14-day Gymnema intervention in otherwise healthy adults. Participants in the Gymnema group reported a reduced desire for sweet foods. They ate fewer sugary treats compared to the placebo group. And over time, Participants reported a reduced overall preference for sugary foods and not just immediately after using the product. Now, beyond its effects on your taste buds, gymnema may also affect how your body processes dietary sugars. Compounds in the herb appear to bind to the glucose receptors in the gut, which then reduces the amount of sugar that gets absorbed into the bloodstream. And it also stimulates the pancreatic cells that produce insulin. So a 2021 meta-analysis looked at the data from 10 human trials involving people that had type 2 diabetes, and the results showed that gymnema supplementation, and now we're talking about a capsule form rather than a lozenge, lowered fasting blood sugar, lowered post-meal blood sugar, and reduced HbA1c levels. That's a marker of long-term blood sugar control. Now, the amount of gymnema that's used in a supplement form is quite a bit higher than what you would get from a lozenge, where a lozenge or a candy might contain four milligrams of gymnema, and really the impact of it is right 
as it hits your tongue, a supplement, which is going to be going through your entire system, that might be 400 to 600 milligrams a day in supplement form. So a hundred times as much. Now with any supplement, you have to weigh the potential benefits against any potential harms or risks. So let's take a look at the safety considerations here. Gymnema sylvester is considered to be perfectly safe at doses of up to 10 grams per day. That's about 20 times more than the most commonly recommended daily dose. Mild side effects, just the usual stuff, diarrhea, stomach cramps, headache, have been reported. There have also been a couple of case reports of liver problems, and although those appear to be pretty rare cases, anyone that has other conditions or factors that affect their liver function probably want to be especially careful. Since it's often used to lower blood sugar levels, there's also a potential for dangerously low blood sugar levels, especially if you combine this supplement with other anti-diabetic medications. So people with diabetes should absolutely consult their healthcare provider before beginning supplementation and also monitor their blood glucose closely to avoid unintended hypoglycemic episodes. And lastly, gymnema could alter either the absorption or the efficacy of various medications, including some of those used to treat diabetes. So really, if you are on any medication, I would consult your healthcare provider or your pharmacist before trying gymnema supplements. But to return to the more quotidian concern of sugar cravings, You could experiment with gymnema-containing lozenges, mints, or sprays, which temporarily disable your ability to perceive and enjoy sweetness. And here are a couple of situations in which a product like this might be useful. Having a few bites of a special dessert and then popping a lozenge would definitely make it a lot easier to stop at just a few bites. But be sure to use that 60-minute window to put some distance, both mentally and physically, between you and whatever's left of that dessert. You might also try using one of these when a random craving for something sweet strikes. It might reduce the intensity of that craving. And even if it doesn't, it's going to take your tongue out of the game for long enough for that craving to pass. That's the thing about cravings. They tend to be pretty short-lived. So if you are actually hungry, you can have a nourishing but non-sweet meal or snack. If you're not really hungry, then use that 60 minutes to get yourself deeply engrossed in another engaging and rewarding activity. And it is possible that using gymnema regularly over time might help you develop a preference for less sweet foods. And that could make it a lot easier to sustain a lower sugar diet over the long term. Reducing your sugar intake can lead to better nutrition and better health, but it doesn't have to mean giving up all sweet pleasures. The trick is just to enjoy sweet treats in moderation, and tools like Gymnema might make that a bit easier. If you give this one a try, be sure to let me know how it works for you. You can email me at nutrition at quickanddirtytips.com. You can also leave me a voicemail at 443-961-6206. Nutrition Diva is a Quick and Dirty Tips podcast. Our team includes Brandon Getchus, Nathan Sams, Davina Tomlin, Holly Hutchings, Morgan Christensen, and Nate Hoops. If you'd like to find out about having me present at your workplace or at your live or virtual event, you can learn more at my website, wellnessworkshere.com. That's all for this episode. Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you next week.